Welcome to this video that follows on from our explanation of the basics of network diagrams and critical path analysis. Over the next few minutes I'll introduce the four different types of links that can be used in your network models, and how they impact the analysis. In the critical path introductory video, I only use a type of link called finish to start, which represents a simple linear relationship between two activities. For example, perhaps you can only start eating a meal after you've finished preparing it. There are three other types of dependency. A start to start link indicates that the start of a successor activity can start at the same time, or sometime after the start of its predecessor. In this case you can start eating the meal at some point after the preparation has started. This might be because you're preparing and eating the meal course by course, or because someone else is doing the preparation and you are only eating. Similarly, a finish-to-finish -finish link indicates that the finish of a successor activity must finish at the same time, or sometime after the finish of its predecessor. Naturally, you can't finish eating the meal until the preparation is finished. For completeness, we should also recognize the concept of a start-to-finish link. This is rarely used in the real world, and examples quoted are often superfluous or contrived. So we'll leave that out of the discussion for now. To better understand these types of link, let's use an example that involves digging a trench, laying a cable and then refilling the trench. We'll estimate that it's going to take six days to dig the trench, three days to lay the cable and two days to backfill the trench. The initial network shows these three activities happening in series and taking 11 days in total. In reality, we can run these activities in parallel, and while we show this using start-to-start -start links, it's not practical for them to start simultaneously. Let's say we need to wait a day from starting the excavation before we can start laying the cable, and a further day from starting to lay the cable to starting to backfill the trench. Common sense tells us that the finishes of these activities are also linked, so we'll add finish-to-finish -finish links to show that laying the cable can't finish until a day after the excavation, and backfilling can't finish until a day after the cable is laid. A sequence of activities linked by both start-to-start -start and finish-to-finish -finish links is commonly known as a ladder. We're now going to calculate the earliest and latest dates for these activities using the method that we covered in the introductory video. In the forward pass we start digging the trench at zero. With a duration of six days its earliest finish is six. Lay cable can start one day after dig trench, so its earliest start is one. Its duration is 3, so its earliest finish would initially appear to be 4. However, we must also calculate along the finish-to-finish -finish link. The earliest finish of dig trench is 6, and lay cable can't finish until a day later, so this calculation gives us an earliest finish for lay cable of 7. In the forward pass if we reach a point from two directions, we take the higher number. The same calculations give us an earliest start for backfill trench of 2 and an earliest finish of 8. We now start the backward pass by assuming a latest finish for backfilling the trench of 8. Since 8 minus 2 is 6, that's the latest start. Following the finish to finish link, the latest that lay cable can finish is a day before backfill trench, or 7. If we follow the start to start link, it would appear that the latest time lay cable can start is 6 minus 1, or 5. But if the latest finish is 7 and the duration is 3, the latest time it can start is actually 7 minus 3, or 4. In the backward pass if we reach a point from two directions, we take the lower number. The same calculations give us a latest finish for dig trench of 6 and an latest start of 0. The third and final phase of critical path analysis is the calculation of float. For each activity this is calculated as latest finish, minus earliest start, minus duration. For dig trench, this is 6, minus 0, minus 6, resulting in a float of 0. For lay cable, it's 7, minus 1, minus 3 which gives a float of 3. Finally, for backfill trench, it's 8, minus 2, minus 2 giving a float of 4. It may seem odd that we have different floats for each activity in the sequence. This is emphasized because we have focused on these three activities in isolation. In practice, there would be activities that lead into dig trench and activities that follow on from backfill trench. If this ladder sequence lies on the critical path, it will pass through dig trench to the finish of lay cable, from there to the finish of backfill trench and from there on to the next activity. The results of a critical path analysis are usually presented as a Gantt chart. 
the default format typically shows activities in their earliest start positions, with float appearing after the activity bar. The default format doesn't work in this case. Lay cable and backfill trench need to be shown in their latest positions so that neither activity finishes before its predecessor. The float shown at the beginning does not mean that the activities can be moved earlier because their finishes lie on the critical path. What it does mean is that they could be made longer to take up the time available. If this is done, they will then appear as critical activities. Ladders can be useful, but can also be confusing, so should be used with care. In this video, I've explained that precedence networks have four types of link. Finish to start, start to start, finish to finish, and the rarely used start to finish. A series of activities that run in parallel and use both start to start and finish to finish links are known as ladders. These can have some unusual effects on the appearance of the critical path and must be used with care. Thanks for watching. To see our growing library of videos, visit www.praxisframework.org. To keep in touch with new developments, follow us on LinkedIn, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or check the news feed on the Praxis Framework homepage. I hope to see you again soon.